Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy and today we're beginning our coverage for San Diego Comic-Con at home. Uh, once again I was able to be put on the press list so shout out again to our friend Andy Babacht who was able to make that possible last year and then this year they kept me on and I believe next year I'll be on as well so that wouldn't be possible without Andy so I want to give a big shout out to Andy and also I'll try to put a link if the episode is up or whenever it goes up I'll add it in a comment down below. Andy had me on his show recently and it was a blast we got to talk about Green Lantern and John Diggle from the Arrowverse. So if you want to, you know, hear more about that and hear us talk about our theories of what's going to happen with John, definitely check out the link. I'll put it either down below or I'll pin it in a comment later on whenever the episode goes up if it's not up already. Now today what we're going to talk about uh, for Comic-Con, I wanted to group, you know, some of this stuff together because I got a lot of emails uh, being on the press list and last year I couldn't cover everything. So this year I wanted to try to find things that were similar to each other and include them all in one video. So that's what this is. Um, in this first video here, I wanted to cover pretty much the first like three emails I got and then add in a couple things to it, which is the topic of diversity and representation in comic books. Now I know I have some people who watch this show that that is very important to them and I have some people that really don't think about that kind of stuff but for me you know I know no matter what color of skin you are no matter what gender you are or what you identify as no matter what it is it's hard to make comic books and for some it is harder obviously and so there is this need and this push to want to have more voices out there and, and people from different backgrounds and I as someone who likes to ingest stories and I get kind of bored of the same uh, cliche stories over and over I also too want newer voices that come in uh, so this is kind of neat the the stuff we're gonna talk about today is all focusing around you know people from different walks of life that are outside of someone like me who you know I'm just like a dude <laughs> just a comic reader uh, but some you know people from different backgrounds kind of bringing their passion to comics and entertainment and things like that and that's what we're going to talk about today and I want to start off with this first group this first email I got from impact 24 I want to thank them because they they provided us with some cool stuff last year to talk about when we did San Diego comic-con at home and so big shout out to them this is a company called Avandu Vasi, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this is a really neat company. So I went to their website, and I'm going to put a link to them and everyone else I talk about. I'm going to put links to them down below. So if you want to learn more about them, and also the reason I'm doing this episode with a couple different groups in this one episode is that hopefully if they watch these episodes, they can learn about each other and see other creators that are out there trying to accomplish the same things they are. So that's kind of why I'm grouping this together in this way. Um, so Avandu Vasi, they have, uh, you know, they they. Come Cover a lot of stuff. If you go to their website, you know they talk about uh, they do comic books, illustrations, concept art, uh, animation, and motion graphics, and even games. Um, and they have a great team that you know founding team that put this together. Uh, you have Salim who's kind of there working at the top. Uh, I think he's the founder and creative director. And you have Elizabeth who's the CEO and projects director. Uh, Nur who is the creative director for writing and content. And then Joe who is the founder and marketing and advertising lead. Uh, so really great team here. And the stuff they're working on looks really neat. They've been uh, nominated for stuff you know they've won some awards and they also have like a submission area if you have a project that you're deeply passionate about that kind of ties into African culture and stuff because that's kind of the primary focus of everything they work on is things that have roots in African infused uh, storytelling so everything they do there is African infused from comic books to games and everything from Iran uh, Sanamu and Beast from Venus like these are just some of the books that and titles that they've worked on it's really neat Moran is a suspense an action-filled fantasy horror graphic novel about a young Maasai warrior who must redeem himself and his family by hunting down and killing an evil enemy that's been terrorizing his people. So kind of revenge stuff, which, you know, I'm into that John Wick kind of style stuff, like, uh, but obviously with an, like an African twist, you know, set in Africa. Um, so this, I don't know, again, just always these types of stories always seem neat to me and I figured there probably be some of you out there that watch my show that might also this might intrigue you so if so definitely check out uh, Avandu Vasi uh, please uh, the link is down below the studio announced a patreon page on June 15th and that provides patrons with exclusive Moran episodes um, Avandu Vasi also recently published Sanamu and Beast from Venus through Comixology so you can find that stuff on Comixology as well and uh, and then also you know if you want to sign up for their patron I will put that down below underneath the, the link to their website so please go check them out really cool stuff when I was checking out their website I liked what I saw and I wanted to share that uh, just a glimmer of that with you guys so if you're into that 
please go check it out. Um, and even if you're not, if it doesn't sound like it's up your alley, still give it a chance. Go at least check out their website and uh, learn more about these projects that they're working on. Like I said, very creative group of people working really hard, and the artwork on their website is really, really cool. I dig it. So I think you will too. This next comic I'm going to talk about and the person making these comics that I'm going to bring up is it really hit home for me because uh, not that I'm Latin in any way, <laughs> like my grandma, I think there's some Spanish on my grandma's side, but uh, but that's like, you know, a generation before a generation before a generation kind of stuff. Uh, but I just know the struggle. Like I, I've made indie comics for years and I've worked even for companies for years and whether I worked for companies or did indie stuff. It was always hard to get press and always hard to get someone to shout you out in any way or to at least mention you in something. And even though I don't have a big audience, I have a great audience, though, uh, but uh, but I know we're not as big as probably this person would like, uh, you know, for us to be to get their name out there. But I still wanted to mention them because, you know, for those of you out there who are Latin, who do watch my stuff or who are interested in that type of culture and those types of storytelling, I wanted to mention this by Caden Phoenix. Uh, this is a Latina superhero universe that uh, that Caden is trying to bring to life uh, through uh, various different books like Jalisco, uh, Santa, uh, La Quita, and Bandida. And these are just a couple of the titles that uh, they're working on, that Caden's working on, that they're trying to get you know the word out there on. And they've been covered on ABC Eyewitness News, uh, Spectrum News, uh, Univision, uh, who actually I worked for at one point in time. Um, and they have a great, great website that you can check out called latinasuperheroes.com. And this world that they're working on, I mean, obviously trying to build one comic book is hard enough. Trying to build a big universe is even harder. And so, again, I appreciate the effort and the endeavor that Caden is going through with this project. It seems like a lot to take on and a big um, responsibility in a lot of ways to bring this to life. And so whatever little bit I can do to help, I wanted to mention here. So I will put a link down below to Caden's website, latinasuperheroes.com, and also their Instagram account, which is at latinasuperheroes, if you want to learn more. Um, but I, I just thought this was really cool. They talked about this being a relatively new universe. Only the first three Latina superhero books are out right now, and there will be more on the way. Uh, they'll be returning to WonderCon, I think, next year, um, and they'll be doing other things, uh, hopefully in future Comic Cons for San Diego as well. And there's also, uh, you know, they're very grateful, they said, to be in a abolishing traditional ideas of Latinas through Latina Superheroes panel, which is going to be on Friday, July 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so 8 p.m. my time. Um, so if I get a chance when I get home that night from work, if I'm home on time, I will try to check it out. Uh, but I'll put a link to that down below as well. That's going to be at Comic-Con, their panels this year. So please go check them out. Support this. If you're into uh, indie books, if you want to see new stories, hear new stories, new ideas, Definitely check out Caden's work. It's it's really awesome what I've seen so far. And Caden, I wish you the best of luck. I think you're going to do really great things. And I had one more email that I got from Comic-Con that I want to cover for Prism Comics. But before we get into that, I do want to give a shout out to some other people that I've just met over the years. Some who have been on this show, some who haven't, but that I've met in real life and just, you know, got to work with and talk with and be, you know, share convention space with and stuff. Um, so I want to give them quick shout outs so you can go check out their books as well. If the stuff I'm talking about in this episode intrigues you or interests you at all, which I hope it does, because... I know Sebastian here, he runs Stranger Comics, and he's got a great team that works with him, but I remember being at a Comic-Con when he was bringing out his first book, or one of his first books. He had Niobe, and then I think he also had something else called The Untamed, which I bought the hardcover of, and he was nice enough to sign for me. But every time I saw him at a convention, I would buy his book, or I would buy the convention cover, because it would usually be a few bucks more, but I love supporting that guy. Sebastian is just the coolest guy. I've ever met just one of the best people out there making indie comics right now and he has stranger comics which basically focuses also on African uh, lore and, and mythology and things like that but also other other you know parts of the world as well but kind of primarily in that including Asunda and that is actually being uh, optioned for an HBO series right now which is really cool HBO picked it up uh, which is Niobe's world of Asunda and this is the first announcement uh, of hopefully many for Sebastian and his team over at, uh, at Stranger Comics because they're just very talented and I love to see, you know, 
great people who work really hard and grind and, and, and spend a lot of their hard-earned money to get their name out there. That's exactly what Sebastian has done. That's what my, my boss Omar did when I worked at OSSM Comics. And I think Omar is working at some stuff with Image right now too. So definitely look up Omar Spahi as well. So we have Sebastian Jones here, Stranger Comics. I'll put a link down below. We have Omar Spahi who also worked really hard, recently did a Kickstarter. Um, and it, I think it got fully succeeded in like a day. It was like crazy. Uh, but Omar is an awesome guy. So I'll put a link to his website and his uh, previously run Kickstarter down below. But hopefully it'll have more information on where that book will be available after the Kickstarter ends. And I was he was nice enough to ask me to do a page of that comic book, which was really awesome. It was like an anthology book of a bunch of one page stories. So I, I owe a lot to Omar. He he gave me a job for many years and I loved working with the guy. He was awesome. And even though we, you know, collided creatively a lot uh, with when it comes to certain things, we're brothers and he was an awesome dude. And so I definitely recommend you check out anything that Omar Spahi works on. Um, and then last, I've, obviously, I want to mention Royce, who we've had on the show. Um, he is amazing talent. He has a book called Legend of Althea. And this book, I'll put a link to the, the Webtoon website down below. You can check out. And I'll put a link to the Instagram account down below, too. Royce was just an awesome guy. He was nice enough to come on the Parasite podcast. I'm a huge fan of his dad, who is uh, the comedian and actor known as Simbad. Uh, but but Royce, I ended up becoming a really big fan of, too, once I talked to him because he's just a big nerd like me. He's just the nicest guy in the world, and he's very, very talented that he clearly has a lot of ideas and he loves sharing them out there and some of the stuff you can get out there for free he puts it out there to for you to enjoy and then other stuff you know i think you can donate to him and and get more access to stuff or purchase some of his work as well please do awesome guys so royce sebastian omar i had to mention you guys you guys are so awesome the three musketeers of indie comics as far as i'm concerned and i wish you all the luck in the world Oh, and I actually have one more thing to bring up because this email just came in as I was recording the episode, so I want to include this too. We also have representation for Native Americans in pop culture with uh, Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas, who is writing at Marvel Comics. I think he's doing Werewolf by Night, and he's doing a couple other books coming up. And my friend Jessica Sang, who is a, a wonderful, wonderful person. When I saw her name, I lit up. She is so wonderful, great person, and she's a comic book historian. And uh, I've known her for years, ever since my days at Top Cow. I think even a little bit before that, when I was working on Soul Star, and she's just phenomenal. So when I saw that she was going to be talking to Taboo uh, at Comic-Con, I was just like, all right, I got to share this information. And it's going to happen on July 23rd at noon. And that's, uh, I think, sp uh, Pacific Standard Time. So that'll be 3 p.m. my time. I won't be able to watch it live because I'll be at work, but I will definitely try to check it out later on because I think it's going to stay up after its live premiere. So I'll definitely put a link to that down below so you guys can check out that panel. Um, that's awesome. I'm actually really intrigued in Native American uh, culture and like the lore and the mythologies that they have with like the Wendigo and stuff like that. I've always been a big fan of hearing their stories. Again, I'm just a story ingester. I just love hearing stories from everywhere. And, uh, and Native American culture has always been one that has very much intrigued me. Them being kind of the, the foundation of this uh, country that we live in, um, there's just so much to, to dive into as far as stories and, and uh, beliefs and things like that. And so I really like that. And it lists here that Taboo is a member of the Shoshone tribe and, uh, and how he kind of perceives the, how the industry has has told stories with Native Americans and, and, and representation and stuff like that and that he's always, there's been stuff he's really liked and that he wants to kind of build off of that by bringing that kind of, uh, you know, a viewpoint to the stuff he writes. So that's really neat. I thought that was cool and, uh, and I wanted to share that with you guys as a last minute addition. So yeah, check out the link down below if you want to watch that panel when it goes live on Friday. And the last group I want to talk about is Prism Comics. Uh, the reason I want to mention them is because they represent the LGBTQ plus community and they have a lot of creators um, that work for them that are of that community. And this just seemed neat, the stuff they were talking about. I, I think I've heard of Prism Comics before, but I, I haven't really like d dove too much into it, I'm ashamed to say. But they have, you know, various things coming up. They have some panels coming up at Comic-Con. Uh, one of them is called Queer Horror. Um, so I guess it's horror through the lens of uh, LGBTQ plus uh, characters, I guess. Um, and then also out in comics, year 34, uh, colon mainstreaming. And so these are going to be at Comic-Con. There'll be links I'll put down below. Uh, there'll be Friday night for queer horror, Friday night, uh, July 23rd from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which means uh, that will be 9 p.m. my time. So that'll be right after the panel we talked about earlier with Latina superheroes. So it'll be back to back. So if you want to check those out, like I said, I'll have links down below to all this stuff. Um, and then also the Out in Comics year 34, 
That is going to be on Saturday, July 24th from 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which would make it 7 to 8 p.m. my time on the East Coast. So uh, the stuff they work on, they have hosts that are going to be Michael Verratti, who's going to be doing the queer horror panel. Um, and they have like Andy Mangles and Sarah Brunstad, who are going to be on the Out in Comics panel. And this just seems like uh, really neat stuff. They're a volunteer or all volunteer nonprofit organization. So everyone who works for this uh, typically is, is not really getting paid. Um, they're working really hard to get these books out there. I mean, typically that's what nonprofit means. Sometimes nonprofits do make money, but that's just to keep the operations running to, to some degree. Um, but they're out there just trying to be a voice for the LGBTQ plus community and diversity and inclusion in comics. And I know a lot of times when people hear that kind of stuff, you know, especially out from YouTubers, they like roll their eyes and they have, they think they're, you know, I, I don't like those conversations. I don't like getting into that stuff. Uh, all I know is that at the end of the day, there are people that are trying to break into comics. And as someone who also went through that for many years um, and also understands how hard that is, but also understands it can be harder for other people who aren't me uh, to do it. Uh, but I will say it's a really tough endeavor to break into comics and to get anything heard any form of art out there and to any get any message heard or any anything you want to say like it's it's hard and sometimes it's hard to get people to listen and that's why i wanted to cover this all this in one episode is because of people like prism comics and latina superheroes avandu vasi stranger comics uh, royce omar like these are people that are out there grinding working really hard trying to just get their art made and at the end of the day that's all i care about is and that's what i see when i look at people who work this hard at comic books is that they just want to have their art seen and read by people and i can completely connect with that <laughs> i understand that a thousand percent and i know it's not easy Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will have more Comic-Con at Home stuff coming up to you very soon. Uh, we got a lot of emails to go through, and I'm going to try to group a few more together and get another one out to you guys soon after this, and then hopefully one or two more after that. Because uh, I, if I do separate videos for all these, I just it's going to get too crazy and with me working uh, you know this week and not having enough days off to cover all this it's just really hard for me to do them all as separate episodes and edit them all so hopefully this format works for you guys and if so you know let me know down below your thoughts on this and i'll have more for you very very soon for comic-con at home thanks so much see you all in the future peace